Hello everyone, welcome back. I want to thank all my new subscribers for watching, for clicking that subscribe button, for clicking that like button, and potentially even sharing the video to others who may enjoy this content. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. So as we continue in this series of sharing my uh, journey towards the dual citizenship process in Sierra Leone, for this video, I wanted to show a compilation of the different events that we participated in. The entire 109 applicants who were there in Sierra Leone applying for their dual citizenship process. It was just a miraculous event to see everyone there being of the same mindset, being of the same, with the same purpose, with the same agenda. Everyone, regardless of them being Christians, whether or not they consider themselves Hebrews, whether they followed um, Kemet, they were all there for the same purpose. And that purpose was reuniting with the motherland because we all considered that to be our home, our original home, you know, where we were taken from forcefully into the Caribbean, into the Americas, and now we have the opportunity to reclaim our heritage. And it was just a blessing and amazing sight to see so many there uh, participating in this opportunity. Now, at the beginning, the very first video that I showed, I shared with you some Bible texts to reference and to support my decision to follow in this path. And I wanted to share those videos, those Bible texts again, um, just to reiterate the purpose, just to, you know, continue the narrative to say Africa is home. Once you are a melanated individual, Africa is your home. We know that Deuteronomy talks about us being brought into Egypt, into the land of our captivity again with ships. We know that we know we should know that text. And we know that that happened because that's why we're here, right? We may be familiar with a lot of the historical narratives that trace the Hebrews' um, journey after AD 70 when they were captured and sent into Rome. At the onset and spread of Christianity, they were forced out. A lot of them migrated to Portugal, to Spain, and other areas into Africa. And we know about King Ferdinand and Isabella, the, the Spanish Inquisition. They were again forced out of Spain into Portugal. And we may have also read the narratives of us again being forced out of Portugal into St. Thomas along the Western African coast and also along the Western coasts of Africa. You know, this is where the whole um, 2019, the year of return in Ghana comes from because history shows that that's where along the Western coast of Africa, that's where we were taken from, we were placed into ships and brought into the Americas and in, in the Caribbean. But the, that's not where our history stops. There are a number of scripture texts, which I'm going to share with you, probably just three, but there are numerous others that talks about our gathering, that talks about us being able to go back to the land at the end of that 400 year period. And one of the texts that I'm going to share is Jeremiah 23, verses 7 to 8. And it says, therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that they shall no more say, the Yahweh liveth which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yahweh liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whither I have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. So we know Exodus traces the journey of the Israelites, of the Hebrews out of Egypt and into the promised land. So that was Egypt then, that was a literal Egypt then. But in this scripture, it says that not only will we call upon Yahweh as the God that delivered us from Egypt, but he will be the God that delivers us from the land of the north. We're in the land of the north now. There's another text, uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 12 to 14. And it says, let me just make sure I have the right. Yeah, Jeremiah 29, verses 12 to 14, all right? 
And it says, then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will pray, I will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall seek, search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith Yahweh, and I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith Yahweh, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. There's another text. And this is Hosea, <clears throat> Hosea 3, no, Hosea 2, verse 14. And it says, Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of Acre for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be at that day, saith Yahweh, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Belai. For I will take away the names of Belam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. We are going to be taken out of the land of our captivity, brethren. So regardless of your mindset, regardless of your spiritual background, regardless of how you identify, as long as you're a melanated individual brought into the Caribbean and the Americas on ships to be enslaved individuals, as long as that's the history of your ancestors, Africa is where you belong. And you may not necessarily be able to go there physically, but it all starts in the mind. It all starts with the mentality of knowing that where you are now is not the best place that you could, could possibly be. There is a better place. And once that starts in the mind, then you'll see your reality starts to change. There are so many other countries that see Africa as their salvation, but it belongs to us. You know, how do you view the place? You will see all 109 of us gather together with the same mindset, with the same motivation of just connecting to the land, connecting to our homeland. And you'll also see us getting our passport, which is the most amazing thing. But unfortunately, the video ends with us flying off and coming back to the Americas coming back to the US, but it won't be the last trip. It definitely won't. Um, I definitely have a few agenda items that I wanna work on. I'm still in contact with the individuals there that I met throughout the trip. And that's a communication and contact that will definitely develop into something else. And I'll take you along with me. But first, stay tuned to this video, watch to the end, like, share, subscribe, and tell me what you think. Hey, how are you?
Vietnam. <laughs> because she's um Mendy. Right, so I'm Mendy, Timmy, Ufulani, and Mandingo. Mandingo. So yeah. like I was saying, we have Mandingo here and they are part of the ethnic city here in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. They have the right just like Mendy, they have the right just like the Timmy. Right. And they are part of the you know one of the ethnic group in Sierra Leone. And also the Fula. Mm -hmm. The yeah, Fula, what were you saying about the Fula? Yeah, the Fula are part of, you know, Sierra Leone and they are part of the ethnic group here in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The current, you know, vice president of the Sierra Leone is Fula, Mohamed Jule Jado. You know, right. like, he's a Fula. So, you know, yeah. we share the same culture, exactly. you know, like everything. And this country is a beautiful country, you know, like the people are nice. And also, we are the only, you know, African country in the entire nation, like giving, you know, citizenship to African Americans. Exactly, exactly. That has done their DNA through African ancestry. Mm -hmm. If you done your DNA through African ancestry, you have like Spanish root, like Mende, Timni, Fula, you know, like right. as long as it's it's, it's there, and it, it's not required. Like you don't, you don't, you're not looking for like a certain percentage. Nah, like, as, right? long as, as long as, as it's long there. As, you know, like it's there. Yeah. You can subscribe to any um, toy agency, but I can, you know, like recommend African Ancestry because that is what I work for. Right. 
and that is you know like the service you know like i know the service what we can do right because so, uh, i travel through vsl and then you are with african ancestry african right ancestry. so there's so many different groups yeah we official have dinners groups. you know like right. you know when you don't your dna you know like you you are you know free to come with yeah. any other you know talk group and they can give you the best exactly but, I work and for African Assessment, so, of so course, I, yep. can, I can, yep. I can work. And they're good, and that's the company that we did the, yeah, um, the DNA, DNA testing yes, through, you know, so. Like, you can see. Yeah. <laughs> see? Yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's your host group, and then yeah, there are quite so. a few other um, government-approved agencies that you can travel with. I'm with BSL, and Dinas has his group. I think there's another one called yeah. Stafford um, Travel Agency. So there are quite a few on the website that you can definitely so take a look at. you are at. welcome to come. Yeah. Families, you know, like, come and, you know, like, we can partner. Mm -hmm. We can do business together. Right. Also, in some marriage. <laughs> we cannot talk, we don't talk about that. Because right. I, <laughs> you said you, said you, t you taught um, Mantinga, right? Yeah. Which, um, what's your website that you... The no, YouTube uh, Mende. channel Mende. Yeah. Which language did you say you teach though? Mende, Mende. Mende. Yeah. Okay. And you can just type, you know, like Mende language. You can, you know, see me. Mm -hmm. you okay. Know. You see so. me. You can see my. You know, so like take the message to your people. Exactly. And also tell them that you know, like we don't like the black diaspora. We love them. They, because there is a perception, you know, saying like Africans, Africans don't, don't like, like you know, yeah. but that's not African true. American or we don't like you know the black diaspora. Right. It's lie. My my experience so far, oh my gosh, is the best welcome that I've had since we've been here. I'll do a separate video on explaining how we went to the village yesterday and the welcome, the warm welcome that we got. Oh my gosh, you've never experienced anything like that. And even today here, it's amazing. Hi guys, so we are here. We're doing the civic tour, and I'm here with this lovely lady who is from the, from a, from the United States. Correct. Right? I live in, in, in the, Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah. So she has a very inspiring story where she started a school in Kenya. But I'm gonna let her introduce herself and just give us a brief history of what her um, ministry is all about. Because you know we're trying to do our little thing here with the midwifery yes. practice. Yes. So we look for these situations to give us inspiration as to how best to maneuver um, all right. the system. Well, first of all, it's a pleasure. Uh, my name is Geraldine Johnson. I go by Dr. G, uh, Mama, Auntie, uh, whatever. Uh, and I guess my story would be that I had my first visit to the continent in 2018 to Kenya. And once again, uh, just like here in Sierra Leone, I met wonderful people. Uh, it started with me going to different villages, uh, Saboti, Katale, meeting people like my wonderful now son, Bishop Patrova, uh, the director of the school she mentioned that I started, uh, Helen Mawashi. And it was just a passion that was born out of me seeing the needs that they had and looking for a place that I could uh, pay it forward mm -hmm. and yeah. just use some of the uh, expertise and, and help and assistance mm -hmm. um, that I am now available to and to uh, use that to help other people change their lives. Exactly, because, yeah, th we'll that's, because that's what it's all about. Right. right. And uh, once you see that life is more than yourself, actually you'll find yourself benefiting as well. Exactly. So while it's been a, a wonderful opportunity for me to partner with other uh, nonprofits, uh, Build a School Foundation, starting my own called Hope Harvest, uh, other local uh, civil uh, businesses in the area of Kenya, uh, Harvest Fields. It's been a collaboration and partnership that is going to change all of our lives. Right, because in, in a lot of cases, we feel like sometimes we don't have enough resources to come and do things, but we've learned so much in the U.S. We've developed so many skills. Yes. We have such a wealth of experience that that alone can make such a big difference here on the continent. It really so, can. No, for, and you were retired at the time yes, when you did, yes, right? I so was even, retired. Our, even our retired yes. population <laughs> has so much to offer yes. in when you decide if you choose to come and try to find where you can fit in. There's such a wealth of opportunity. I agree. Right? So, so we invite don't you let to come. anybody give you an excuse. Uh, not age, not what you think you can offer, uh, even if just your hands. Exactly. exactly. I, I say yes, yes. Serve yes. others and you will be the beneficiary. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. All right, Thank my so pleasure. Right. Organizations and store operators for their effective collaboration in making this homecoming journey and the confirmation of citizenship ceremony 
for the African diaspora a very wonderful experience. For those returning now or later, I wish you all traveling masses. Don't be strangers here. This is your home. Now you can come without visas. You can come at any time and you are welcome all the time. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you.